This episode's brought to you by Notorious Fire Company. Firefighter owned and operated Notorious Fire Company manufactures and creates quirky and unique items for the fire service. Whether it's your stainless steel water bottles, tumblers, four-in-one koozies, you can decorate your emotional support water bottle with more than 100 different designs they offer so very much. From apparel to swag to stickers, they got you covered. Check them out at NotoriousFire.com. That's N-O-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, NotoriousFire.com. And check them out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at NotoriousFire. And this month with the podcast, if you use coupon code Fire Radio June 2023, that is Fire Radio June 2023, you'll get free shipping on all orders within the U.S. So check them out, NotoriousFire.com. Lenny and the crew, they're making great stuff. And I have to tell you, with the summer upon us, the sticker packs are out of control. You got everything from Star Wars to pinups and everything in between. Slap them on your beer fridges, your coolers, and your tumblers and celebrate the summer in style with Notorious Fire. A good supporter and longtime friend. We're happy to have him on the podcast with us. Check him out, NotoriousFire.com and coupon code FIREADIO June 20. 23 for free shipping all across the U.S. This episode is brought to you by Box Alarm Grills. When your apparatus arrives on scene, are you making the best showing? Looking to set your rig apart from everyone else? Want your engine, truck, or rescue to be easily identifiable? There is a solution. With large aluminum grill numbers and full-width rear mud flaps from Box Alarm Grills. Formed by Danny and a team of fellow firefighters, Box Alarm Grills gets it. They know what it means to show pride in your ride, delivering the quality construction and design that fire departments demand. That's why their grill numbers and mud flaps grab attention, enhance visibility, and make your fleet recognizable on scene while responding or just driving around town. Built in the USA by a family-owned business, Box Alarm Grills is quickly becoming the choice of fire companies, apparatus planners, and fire truck manufacturers with out-of-the-box or custom solutions. Check out functional, durable grill numbers and mud flaps from Box Alarm Grills today at BoxAlarmGrills.com and on Facebook and Instagram. And like Danny and his crew like to say, add pride to your ride. Hey everyone, Jeremy National Fire Radio. Welcome back to the podcast today. I'm looking forward to this one. I think this is going to be a pretty hard-hitting episode. I think there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out of it. Drew Evans, 20 years in the fire service, 10 with Washington, D.C., currently a technician on Washington, D.C., Truck 16. Drew, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. Yeah, this is cool, right? So uh, you and I crossed paths uh, a little while ago. You guys, uh, you have a a page on Instagram that I follow, uh, and a lot of your stuff is pretty pretty involved meaning it's no fluff man this is like you know when i do the apparatus stuff the tips tricks and hacks of apparatus you're doing a lot of fire ground stuff where you're you're seeing something and you want to share it and instagram is one of those platforms that you could do that on and so i know you were saying on the pre-show that like you like to drive around or you take pictures you find stuff you like to share it with your guys well why not put it on a bigger audience and share it with everyone uh, which led to something you did with a bunch of other guys on Instagram for uh, Forcible Entry Friday. Uh, and then from there, uh, you spearheaded that effort, and you guys were putting out regular content on Fridays about Forcible Entry. So break it down, man. The passion for training. I mean, where does all this stem from? Um, I mean, I, I pretty much grew up in, in the fire service. You know, I started as a junior when I was 16, um, kind of, watching my father uh he, he definitely was the one who got me into it nice. so and it would didn't take long for the the bug to bite me yeah. um and then i just started chasing uh more fires and busier busier departments um you know in around new york and ended up ma- moving my way down here but um uh, i'm not good at a whole lot of things <laughs> right Talk about now, i'm it. not saying i'm and i'm not saying i'm great at this but i do all right uh, yeah it's definitely it's definitely been my my passion for the, the better part of my adult life um and uh i've i've always had some really great mentors 
you know, through the fire service that gave me everything they had. Yeah. Like didn't hold back, you know, knowledge is wasted if it's not passed on or however that quote goes. Um, and I, I always wanted to keep that going, you know, and from where I, where I started to where I ended up, I, I've had phenomenal mentors. Um, and not saying like, I, I'm, I'm striving to be someone else's mentor. Like I, I just want to pass on everything that yeah. I, that I have and, and more to, you know, keep the, uh, keep the, you know, the craft yeah. alive. Well, and, I know. think that's, what's really cool. Right. It's like when you're, when you're able, like I, I had a great conversation the other day where we were talking about, like uh, they said, you know, that they didn't really have a mentor per se, but they wanted to sit at the table. Right. Meaning like they had a bunch of people that carried themselves in a way and emulated the way that they that this person wanted to be. And so it was it was following in their footsteps, but not a direct mentorship where it was a one on one like, hey, man, let me I'm going to teach you this, show you this. I'm going to keep an eye on you. It was more about like, hey, I want to be like those guys. Right. But I think Mm -hmm. what's fun about that, whether it's a direct mentor or wanting to get a seat at the table. It's all about, and a lot of it has to do with then doing it yourself and passing it forward. Like anybody that keeps this to themselves uh, or doesn't want to help the guy next to him or across from them, there's got to be some question there, right? I mean, it's all about passing this forward and paying it forward. Yeah. I mean, what, what good is it if you, if you hog any of the knowledge to yourself? And it doesn't matter what scale you look at it on, whether it's the people in your company you know, so how many is that? Is it, uh, you know, you got four on the floor wherever you, where you work, or is it, you know, 20 guys? Are you talking to, you know, a class you're teaching somewhere or all of the interwebs uh, via some social media platform? Like, I don't, I don't care what the stage is and you passed on. I, I remember what it was like being a 16, 17, 18 year old kid, you know, just joined the volunteer fire service. And I wish I had the amount of knowledge we have at our fingertips available to me then. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I didn't have any of it. Like you and I were saying on the pre-show, it was uh, the internet to, for me wasn't until my freshman year of college, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and my first email address was when I was 18 years old. So like, and the internet in the beginning days was, was very new and you didn't know how to use it. And the, the amount of content on it is nothing like it is today. And social media didn't even exist yet. It was just websites. Right. Yeah. How did you, so your early days, I mean, you grew up in a legacy firehouse. Your father was the one that, that got your, uh, got your feet wet in the fire service. When did you know that you wanted to try more or do more? Or ch- you said, I think your, your words were chasing fire. When did you yeah, realize pretty, pretty much. <laughs> how did, how did that go? I mean, from New York state to, uh, to Prince George's County, Maryland, right? Like how, yeah. how did that work? So I grew up in a, small town called memphis new york it's about 20 minutes outside of syracuse west syracuse um little two engine bay house that maybe goes out the door i don't know 300 times a year might be might be generous right right? but seeing my old man do it that's what got me into it um and funny thing is uh i I love my dad uh to death um but when it comes to the fire service we will butt heads together (laughs) to no end (laughs) to no end um but uh i i got bit by the bug right i i just got infatuated with with everything about the fire service and i wanted more and in small town memphis new york that's running maybe 300 calls a year that's not going to happen. Can only give you so much. So, right. So, got got a little older. It was time to move out of the house. So, got an apartment with a buddy of mine uh, about a couple towns over in Fairmount, uh, right outside uh, Syracuse, um, and joined there um, in oh, 06, 07 ish, somewhere in that range. Um, so they were a little bit busier, a little bit bigger house. Um, definitely went to more fires, but it was still a nice neighborhood. Not a ton of fires to be had. Um, but it it 
it fed the addiction for a little while. Right. Um, until I did, you know, realize that there were, uh, other places, you know, like PG County, like you said, and mm-hmm. wherever else. And then I went, wait a minute, we're going to a thousand runs here and they go to 6,000, 7,000. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. They're going to more fires in the year than I'm taking, you know, whatever else is. Yeah. I, I think I might need to go. What is it? Your early twenties? Yeah, I moved. Uh, I moved to PG County when I was twenty one, twenty two, something like that. That's like that's like heyday, man. I mean, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me, so that's fun, right? So I mean, you get there. It had to be pretty eye opening because it is. Uh, it's it's a different. It's a different world, right? There's there's an extreme presence there versus you know a fire company that's running three hundred to a thousand runs, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely a, a shock in that regard. Definitely a cultural shock coming from, you know, small town Memphis to even you know a, a suburb of Syracuse and going down to uh, gorgeous Prince, Prince George's. Gorgeous, yeah, um, yeah. It was a uh, that was a bit of a shock, um, but being a early twenties kid living in the firehouse, going to, you know. I think I I tried to keep track for there. There's a couple guys uh, there at Kentland that like they could tell you every fire that they've been to. Sure. I think you probably you probably met one of them, the, the historian sure. there. <laughs> Absolutely, um, Matt. Um, but I, th- I tried to keep track for a while. I never made it past the first year, but I think I went to. I think I was working like some bullshit part time job. Um, while I was living in the firehouse the first couple of years. So I think I went to like 62 working fires the first year I lived there. I said, oh, this, I'm fucking, I'm sold. <laughs> I love, I love how you said some bullshit job, right? Because like that's at that age, right? You're, you're living to go to the next fire and the, the yeah, job, I, I, the job that you take, right. Is what <laughs> to pay for McDonald's and cigarettes basically. Yeah, basically, yeah. I, I worked at I worked I worked at Dick's Sporting Goods. I love it. In the outdoor section in Columbia, Maryland, uh, part time. It was only like twenty, maybe thirty hours a week. That's freaking half awesome. Half of which, half of which, I called out because like, hey, you want to run the line today? Like, yeah. I'm not going to work. Oh my god. <laughs> But that's what it was, right? That's what it is. That's what it was then, right? I mean, it was you know you're at that age where it's like you just can't get enough. Yeah, nothing else mattered. I actually, uh, so I went down there when we, um, two of my buddies from Fairmount, we we decided like, all right, we're gonna go check out this PG County thing. We're like, where do you go? It's too, it's a huge county. And, sure. You know, like that. I mean, I've been there a long time now. I couldn't even tell you how many departments there are too many um we're like we narrowed it down to Cantland, Berwyn heights and bladensburg right so our, pl- our plan was the three of us were going to split up each go right along at one of the places and then report back and we were gonna <laughs> we were all gonna go together eventually like right the yeah, three right. of us were gonna move in together yep, but we yep. wanted to like divide and conquer figure out what was what and then come back with a you know full report right um the other two guys never, never ended up, uh, never ended up moving down. But wow. Okay. I, I, I'm like, you know, I'll go right along Kentland and see what, see what that's all about. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, basically never left. Let me, so I, I wrote down comfortable, right? Because too, I think so many people get comfortable where they are. And I always encourage even guys in my firehouse to go try somewhere else. Go see what it's like somewhere else, right? Like, I get to travel all over this country. I go to firehouses all over the country. I get to see the different types from volunteer to bunk in to per diem to full time and everything in between you could possibly imagine. There's so mm-hmm. much variety out there. Was it hard for you to leave home or were you ready? Like, you were like, nope, this is it. It's kind of like Brody from Bra- uh, from Point Break, right? Chasing the biggest wave. Like, is that what it was <laughs> for you? No, I'm serious. Like, yeah. is that what it was? Yeah, 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 kind of. I was, uh, awesome. I was definitely, um, I was definitely ready to, to leave home. I, I, I have some phenomenal friends, sure. lifelong friends sure. and mentors at Fairmount. Uh, I'm still friends to this day with uh, damn near half the half the roles there. I mean, guys, there were grooms from my wedding. There's their family. They'll yeah. always be family. Right, right. So it it was tough to leave them. Um, but it it was definitely definitely time to 
to go try something new. And like we talked about off the air, that was around the time. I mean, as soon as I got out of high school, um, I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, so I started taking fire department tests everywhere. Yeah, right. I took uh, the first test I ever took was Rochester, New York, straight out of high school. And like I tell you, I, I wrote really well on that test. I was sitting 125th on our list of 5,000 people. Nice. And they went in a hire, they went in a hiring freeze and never oh. hired anyone off that list, oh. to my knowledge. Jeez. But I know I didn't get a call. Yeah. Um, I think Buffalo laid off a bunch of dudes at that, that time. At that time, yeah. so we're like, yeah, maybe we'll pass. Uh, but I mean, there was some website that was going on down like back in that time. Like you could buy a membership, and like they'd tell you like every fire department who's hiring, right? Having a pass. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, like career, fire careers or something. So I mean, we were we were on that, and we were traveling to the DC metro area every other weekend for a test. Me and you know one or two of my buddies, and it was. Montgomery County, Alexandria, Fairfax, D.C., you know, I mean, everywhere that's within, you know, basically 20 minutes of, of where I ended up moving in. Yeah, so right. It, it made sense. I want to I wanna be busier. I want to learn. I want to go to more fires, and I want to get on a job somewhere, and – there's just there were not a whole lot of jobs in upstate New York. I, I just the, I just think that area though is uh, you know in the in the metro DC area for somebody that wants to get hired say in the mid Atlantic or Northeast because getting hired in the Northeast is near impossible right and yeah. so a lot of people have to leave this area to go find careers and find jobs and that mid Atlantic area though like PG County and in the surrounding area Washington DC. <laughs> There's so much opportunity there because there's so many different departments, right? Yeah. Yeah, there, there's there's a ton. I mean, the handful of counties around D.C., everywhere out in Virginia, and the further you go south. Um, actually, one of my buddies that came down to ride along with me at Kent Land, who was one of my, my buddies from Fairmount, we went and we stayed at Kent Land for a for a night or two before we were supposed to take Newport News Virginia's test. Yeah. Um and I think we went to a fire that night. <laughs> and we're sitting around we're sitting around the table like wee hours in the morning. Like we, we should have been getting to sleep. Yeah, so right. Dead, yeah. dead on our feet, like trying to take this test. And uh, you know, my buddy Andy and I are bullshitting like, all right, what time we got roll out of here? Like blah blah blah. Then talk fire and i can't remember who it was one of the guys like you want to go take that stupid test you want to go to another fire (laughs) yeah sold i know the answer to that (laughs) so needless to say i did not make it down to newport news well and that listen man i I live that too not as busy as you but like when i was in college i was also a fireman in poughkeepsie new york in accommodation department i miss class all the time to go to fires or calls i mean that was just you know, it was like, what's the what's the trade-off? It was either, you know, at night I'm going to the bar or going to the firehouse. It's one or the other. And during the day, I'll go to class unless box drops or or we got work to do. Then I, I, I got to come up with an excuse why I'm not in class. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's just my priorities were so skewed in, in, towards the fire service that it literally took over. So I get it. Yeah. Let me ask you this, man. First year down in Kentland, 62 working fires. I guess it didn't disappoint. <laughs> No, it didn't. Uh, it was an amazing time to be, you know, young, early 20s, sure. living there. With, I mean, basically uh, basically like a, a frat house that goes to fires is sure. what a lot, of people, a lot of people call it, and that's not too far from the truth. Um, no, but they but got yeah, the job I mean, done, uh, though. See, that's the thing, man. Yeah. That's the distinction. It's like, call it what you want, but, man, there's good firemen there, and they're doing good work. I mean, that, that's just fact. Yeah, so some of the best firemen I know I, I lived with there sure. during the during those years. I just believe phenomenal, it. Phenomenal, phenomenal guys. And, and not all of them moved on to to be career firemen either. Right. You know, some of them, some of them took a different career path, but uh, they probably missed their calling. There's there's a couple of lawyers out there right now that probably should be, <laughs> should be dragging hose and slinging ladders. Cause, I love and it. They, but, yeah, phenomenal guys. I, I loved loved every second I lived there. Do you, I mean, I know you, you appreciate New York and your roots, but I mean, Kentland probably really 
got you established to the point of like, okay, this is it. Like I'm, you were hooked, but now you've got to be really hooked. Right. Because you never left the area. Right. I mean, you're hired in Washington, yeah. DC. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I already had it in my mind that I, you know, I wanted to get, get on the job somewhere. Um, but being there definitely, if, if there was any room for doubt, solidified it for sure. Yeah. And being, being right there, I wasn't committing an entire weekend uh, you know, and 16 hours of driving to go take a test somewhere. It was me and four of the guys got up by the bunk room and said, all right, we're going to Fairfax today. Yeah. Let's go take the test. You right. Know? Right. So, so is that what you Ironic- did? So you were testing all over them? Yeah, we were testing all over the place. Ironically, <laughs> I took DC's test when I still lived in New York. Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> all of the tests I took after I moved down didn't yeah. pan out. Right. Because you were too busy going to but, fires, you didn't show up for the test. Uh, <laughs> there, there may have been a, there may have been a few late nights in College Park that uh, uh, it's precluded, good. precluded me from making it to a test on time. That's yeah. fantastic. I love that. I love that. So what? So Washington D.C. calls. I mean, this is a nice urban, you know, busy urban department. You, you had to be pretty stoked to be able to get that call. Yeah. Yeah, and in true D.C. fashion, they they call on a Friday and say show up on Monday. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess you was, weren't going to work at Dick's that, that Monday, huh? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> no, I was actually mortified because I was, you know, living at the firehouse and woke up for early morning box and I'd get back and look at my phone. I had a missed call from DCHR. I'm like, Oh shit. I missed the call. Oh man. Call, call them right back. Like, yeah, do you, do you still want this job? Like, Fuck yes, I do. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, what are you crazy? <laughs> so from there, then uh, that's it. Report and um, what was the academy like? I mean, you're a guy with you know a pretty decent amount of experience under your belt now, and uh, um, and then you go through the DC Academy. Now I gotta believe there were other guys from the same programs that were might have been in your class. Um, I had one other PG County guy. Mm, in my in my in my recruit class so um you know naturally shut the hell up yeah pretend pretend you know nothing right no one knows me okay uh the the problem is you know i'm not the first can't land guy to get hired in dc sure um and i'm like i like to think i'm a little bit of a, a prankster well there's there's more than one of them too. So <laughs> uh, naturally the word, you know, there was a target slapped on uh, yeah. our backs uh, right. from, from the minute. Yep. And the, the, uh, our, our recruit class captain let it, let it slide for a while. He kept it, he like, he knew day one, but sure. uh, I think he let it go for like a couple of weeks. And then like, we're getting off the bus one day going somewhere. He's like, I know, motherfucker. I'm like, oh, my, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> sir? Yeah, sir? What? Right. What, what do you know? What do you know, sir? <laughs> oh, that's funny. How was the academy um, experience for you? Because, I mean, you, um, you're you a student of this game. You're teaching today, right? You're instructing today. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But, like, for you yeah. back then, was training important to you? Or was it just the just kicking ass on the fire ground? Like, you know. Uh, no, no. Training has always been, okay. been important. And that goes all the way back to um, – yeah, you know, my, my days in Fairmount and, and having top notch dudes yeah. look out for us there and, and nice. pass on their knowledge. That's obviously a huge component um at Kentland. Like if if there's not a, a daily drill done in some form or fashion, like someone's getting ass chewing. Got it. Like that doesn't count, you know, running lines on on fire alarms or, you know, running a fire yeah. eighteen boxes that day, whatever it is, like those guys that are there are, are doing some kind of drill. Um, it doesn't matter what you know, like, and it kind of leads into something I wanted to hit on later. You, you asked me what keeps me up at night yeah. in, uh, you know, a couple of days ago. And that's, we'll, we'll lead into that later. But um, yeah, like they're, they're drilling every day. I know they are. We, we did every single damn day I lived there and afterwards. Uh, and I know they still are today. That's a, a huge component of it. So the training Academy for me, um, it fucking sucked. I hated it. It was miserable. Um, we had some, I had some great instructors, uh, all of them. I'm, I'm very close with and friends with now. Sure. Um, but 
right now I can say that the recruit school is running at like 180%. Like where got they've got, they've got things pretty much dialed down to a science and where before, um, and definitely when I came down, it was almost like, uh, I lucked out, I had phenomenal instructors, um, but it was almost like a punishment position. Yeah. Like if you're if right. you're if you're gonna go to, down to the school, you were there on bad boy time. Yep. And actually, a couple of our instructors were there on bad boy time. Um. So, if you're punishing a guy by sending him to the school, like how how engaged and involved is he? How exactly. much does he? How much does he put in every day? And I mean, I I, I get it. You know, um, not to say those guys didn't. They they broke our balls and, and did a phenomenal job. They're an awesome environment. Um, I don't think, I don't think of my two um, or my three rather uh, actual class officers were there on bad boy time. They just got stuck down there, but they, at the time, they also had a, a bad habit of sticking guys down there and say, Hey, you're going to come teach us recruit class. Uh, hey, you just did that one. How about you do another one? Hey, we got you for two. You mind doing three? And right. then just pretty much forget about people down there. So we didn't always have a great track record of taking care of the guys um, that that went down there. So it wasn't but it I, wasn't looked at as a uh, you know uh, a, I don't want to say premier, but a, 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 a position you wanted to go to because yeah. you're probably going to get screwed over and you're on day work. You're no, you're right, work, and and I so. think I think for for so many departments that's the way it was, and I think there's still a lot that that's the way it is. And and in fact, what we want are the most dynamic people in our training academies because they're setting the expectation from day one for these guys. And if you got guys there that are disconnected or put there or forced to be there, I mean, what what value are they truly going to bring? Right? We want we want yeah. all stars down there. Yeah, even if they are all stars, they're they're there on some kind of yeah right. Or, they don't want to be there. Yeah, it's still it's still affecting the output. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So recruit school was a struggle to get through, and and we had a, I mean, we had guys with tons of experience, guys that left other career departments to to come there in my class, down to the local kids who had maybe seen a fire truck run up and down the road one time. Yeah. Like right. they, I, you know, zero experience, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we got through that. It was all right. We made it out alive. And then you got to the line. Did you go to an engine or did you go to the truck? No, I got appointed to uh, to truck 16. Okay. So you've been at truck yeah. 16 for the last 10 years. Yep. Nice. Okay. Yep. Southeast is home. It's a good place to be. Uh, I, yeah. I'm not trying to go anywhere just yet. Okay. So as a, fun. yeah, so as a so your early days there, I mean, uh, you you talked about mentors. You talked about the guys in New York that mentored you. I'm sure at Kentland there were a few people that you know. You said that you went to fires with some of the best firemen you've ever met from there. I gotta believe DC follows just right in suit with the rest. Yeah, I I've been I've been lucky in that regard. Every everywhere I've gone, um, not this that many places. I don't four on the list, uh, but everywhere I've gone, I've had phenomenal people um kind of show me the way and passing on you know their knowledge their experience um what, you know, I had a, what makes a phenomenal a, go ahead go ahead I, I i was gonna say i had a great um great senior man uh and technician uh my tillerman when i came on the job um definitely demanded uh not perfection right but he 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 knew what he wanted out of the guys and expected <clears throat> expected top performance out of us, but he also had been there for I don't know, like eighteen years before I got there. Yeah. Um as a technician. So um he knew the area, he knew the job, and he he passed it all on to us. I may ride on the truck these days, but I still keep my original snagger tool by Modus Fire Rescue on me at all times just in case those guys on the engine need some help moving the line. The snagger is great for that and many more things. It's also great for used for breaking tempered glass or in a pinch as a spanner wrench. So head over to modusfirerescue.com and use code THESIZEUP, one word, to save yourself 5%. This episode's brought to you by Taylor's Tins. 
Taylor and his crew at Taylor's Tins have been manufacturing aluminum helmet fronts since 2017. With over 200,000 tins in the market, they are a leader in the helmet front space. Custom design, one-offs to department orders. They can turn them around within 24 to 48 hours. Customer service is what they pride themselves on, and they provide nothing but top-shelf product and service to their customers. Check them out at taylorstins.com and check out their full line of product offering. They've always been a very strong supporter since day one with the National Fire Radio podcast and platform, and Taylor and his crew have become dear friends of ours, and we appreciate the support. And at checkout... For a little extra bonus, use coupon code NFR sent me. That's NFR sent me for a discount on your order. Exclusions do apply. Anyway, check out taylorstins.com for the latest and greatest offerings from Taylor and his crew. And in the words of Taylor, stop burning up leather. I, there's so much to that. I mean, it's, you know, to have a guy like that, I mean, and that's what I was going to ask you is like, what makes a phenomenal mentor? Like what makes for you when you got there, you got a guy with 18 years of experience there that is looking for, he upholds this level of proficiency and expectation, right? And, and you got to bring your game to, to rise to his expectations. Yeah. I mean, I, I think of, you know, mentorship or, or, it, or just, teaching, passing on, whatever you want to call it, I, I think that can take a lot of different forms, right? That could be that could be the, the hard ass senior man who expects a top notch job. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's not babying anyone, um, maybe a little rough around the edges, whatever. Like not maybe like the mentor you in the traditional aspect of like, oh, he took me under, when everyone else was mean to me, he took me under his wing and showed me right, the way. No, right, right, right. It, the, the hard ass can still be the mentor, right? Sure, if he's, 100%. If, uh, if the job is getting accomplished, right? And then by, by that, I mean the the knowledge transfer, right? We're, we're teaching whoever the, the mentee is, if you will. Um, you know, I, I, plenty of people I consider mentors from Kentland, I mean, screamed and yelled at my ass for doing dumb shit. Or even when I thought I wasn't doing dumb shit, I still got screamed and yelled. I'm like, wait a minute, what, what am I doing? Um, but so I think that takes all different forms. Um, whether it's, you know, just the drills and training or, uh, you know, life advice. That's one thing that, you know, the I definitely didn't have uh, um, I don't say any knowledge of, but like didn't care, right? I was there to go to fires. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So coming in from Canland, I'm a young kid, you know, one of the fires, and then you know, not long after I get there, you know, my my senior man's like, "Hey, do you have this account set up through our credit union? Hey, do you have you know, like what do you, what are you putting into this deferred comp? You know, our retirement." Uh, uh, account like hey how about this like what what life insurance can you pick i'm like i don't care i just want to get on that ladder truck and break doors and go to fires he's like no 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 kid listen to me yeah it's like don't wait until you're my age to figure this shit out like here's some things that you need like here's what the department offers us and here's some things they don't you need to you need to take this into account now like do it now when you're young and you've got zero uh time on the job so when you do have the time to go you you're set up yeah so yeah i, I mean it, it it takes so many different forms i agree with you and i think that's what's that's why you know before i mentioned getting a seat at the table it's not might not be just one guy that is your your mentor but it could be a group of people that all have different characteristics or styles yeah and they all uh, you know all add up to what you need i would almost say like if you only have one mentor you're you're at a a deficit or a loss compared to someone else that has many because I, I know I don't have all the answers. Yeah. I don't know everything. Right. So if, if some guy, come, one of my guys comes to me and goes, all right, Drew's my mentor. I'm only going to listen to him. He's going to give me everything he knows. And that's going to be enough. Like, no, it's probably not. Like you need to, you need to get as much as you can. Uh, I don't, um, we were just, uh, we were just finishing up an aerial operator class at the school. Um, and I was telling a group of guys, um, you know, for a long time, I would watch videos of like LA and West coast truck work. 
one because there were some pretty cool videos on YouTube and who didn't <laughs> at the time, right? Yeah, exactly. If you say you didn't, you're lying. Um, but I, I grew up in in New York, moved down a little bit, but I'm pretty familiar with Northeast New England and Mid Atlantic truck work. Sure. Right. Yeah. What, what are the guys on the West Coast doing? Why does it look so different? Why do they do things different than we do? I want to. I want to figure it out and break yeah. it down. Is it all going to work for us? No. There, there's some differences in building stock and, and their operation and whatever, but there's going to be some things that you can pick up on that uh, I could use that. No, I, I like that. That could work. You know, if you're not looking everywhere, looking at the full, the full picture of the job to, and then taking that and going, all right, how can I apply this to me and my, my town, my department, wherever I'm at, my spot, um, you know, how can this work for me or just put it in the back of your brain and maybe, you know, 10 years from now, you're like, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. It looks familiar. Yeah. Well, I love, I mean, I love challenging people to go, to go find something, right. Because you know, yeah. it's, uh, I, I, did you find that happen later in your career? A couple, as you matured just a little bit, you know, maybe after the first couple of years of kicking open doors and going to fire after fire, did you start to realize like, man, there's, there's more to this craft, this art, there's a, a style, a way, a, a tempo, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, did it, did it take a little bit of time before you realized you wanted to digest what others were doing? I know it did for me. I thought I, I thought I had all the answers in the beginning and, and I didn't look too far uh, only to come to find out that I was coming up short and it, it you had to open your horizon or, or you're, you're going to be, you know, pigeonholed into, you know, what you only know. Uh, I kind of went, um, kind of went full circle on that. So if we go back to living in New York, like yeah. I was taking in everything that uh, I could get from the guys to firehouse and Fairmount. And then I uh, would be, we'd be going to, going to conferences or, yeah, nice. um, watching videos or whatever it was and just taking it all in. Right. And being young and dumb, um, and not, I want to say not knowing our place, but not knowing our place, you know, we, me and my buddies go and take, uh, take a couple classes at, uh, the New York state fire Academy. Right. And you you roam the halls there and there's, you know, pictures of Andy Fredericks and a bunch of smooth bar nozzles. So we yeah. immediately, immediately ran home. We're like, we need to get rid of these TFT bullshit. Like we need smoothbore nozzles right Ooh, now. Like, yep. what are we doing? And they're like, shut up, kid. Yeah, slow go, down. Go away. Go away. They're like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, we're doing it wrong. <laughs> shut up, kid. Go away. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, and yeah, it came, it came around full, full circle. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's definitely a point later, probably, you know, probably my, my early time can't land, we're like, uh, the way we do it is the only way. This is how God intended truck work to be, and Got this it. is the way we do it. Yeah. Then, then we we snap back out of there. Like, eh, wait a minute, hold on. Like, you, you're you're not God's gift to firefighting, right? We, there's there's more out there than what we do in this small little corner of the world. Love and it. If you look at everything, you you'll learn more. Yeah. You know, and it will help you hone your own style. Um, you know, if you're not don't don't be narrow minded or um, you know, only take what, I mean, Grant, like some things are pretty area specific and I'm not saying like we can take how they, how they do truck work in LA and, and transfer that to, you know, Maine, right. It, it's going to be different. Um, but you, there, you can't go to me a place where you're not going to learn something you can't apply to your job. Yeah. I, you Where, know, wherever, wherever you are. Yeah. For me, you know, you, you might not be able to, uh, to copy what they do because of different sets of circumstances or something, but it's even just the mindset or theory behind it. Right. They do it this way because of this, it gets you thinking, you know, more so about the whole operation and not just the end, right? And not just the end yeah. game, but it's everything leading up to it that the mindset might be different because they're dealing with something different. And I love all of that, man. And I think that needs to be talked about. So I ask you this then with you being only at truck 17 or I'm sorry, truck 16 for the last 10 years, what does your company look like? Are you a young guy there? Or are you an older guy? You fall in the middle. Like what's, what's the makeup of your, of your company? Um, it's, it's a young department overall. Okay. We've got a ton of young guys. I've got, I've got a very, I've got a young crew. Okay. Um, I've got one guy on the side of the truck that's older, older than I am by, uh, two or three years. Um, I've definitely got more gray hair than everyone, everyone in the firehouse. So, 
but in that regard, I'm the old guy. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to think of myself as, as the old guy or the sure. old head. I'm definitely, definitely not, you know, you don't say when you have 10 years in the job that you're, you're the senior man, even if you have the most time right. in the company, like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking that title, you know, but, um, but yeah, we've got, even across all four of our, the shifts, right. Um, at, at the truck, we've got a young, young crowd, but they're young and they're motivated and they work hard and I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, I love the fact that you've been there for 10 years. I just, there's something, there's something about guys that stay put when they find something that they enjoy and they like, um, and they're, and, and they want to, they really want to become proficient in that spot. I, so many of my friends that are in different city departments that want to retire as, as just a, a fireman, a backstep guy. It's because they yeah. want to, they want to work at that over that 25 year career. Um, I think there's something to be said for that. And that's exciting. I mean, I got to think too, as a young guy comes into your company and they have a 10 year guy on a, on a department overall, that's trending younger to have a guy that's rooted there from his early days and still there. I'm sure that makes a difference for them. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure to some degree it does. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy being there and that's why, why I stayed like, I, and to your point, like I, I at least in our job, it seems like the days of guys retiring as backstep firemen are all but gone. Yes. Um, now, when you have those guys, we just had one go, not from uh, truck 16, but one of the trucks uh, up in Northwest. Um, guy went out the door with 25 years of just Being backstep fireman, fireman yeah. on the side of the truck. Right. And that guy, that guy was – more well respected than yeah half the chiefs on the job it. you know he so you, you you get that um if there was a way I, I could figure out to like make captains pay but just run the bar <laughs> every day like yeah be, right be you're the in. barman every day but yeah. Like, yeah i'm your guy i'll see if i i'll see if i can swindle that one but um yeah i mean and everyone's got their their own motivations and sure. life around so so promotion comes into play and you know, unfortunately, in DC, we do have to deal with uh, an ambulance. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a motivating factor for guys to um, get promoted. Mm -hmm. And there's more promotion spots than there are technician spots. So a technician, you get a technician spot, you're off the ambulance. It is a you know promoted position. So that's some incentive to stay. Um, Talk to me a little bit about just, that position, though, right? So, as a technician, you're the chauffeur, yeah. right? So you're, right? Is that yes. is the Tillerman just the Tillerman's not a promotable spot, right? So it's yeah, just it is. oh, it yep. is okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So both both the truck driver and Tillerman are got are, it uh, technicians. They're promoted spots, so okay. it's um, a little bit um, kind of we'll, we'll say a two part process. So it it's still administered partly at the company level by the by the company captain so there's a, a district knowledge exam that's right. done in-house okay um like we don't we have computers in the rigs um that sometimes work but i mean the driver <laughs> the driver can't see them yeah right. um we don't have any map books like it's it just tr traditionally and historically like the the technicians were supposed to know where they're going so yep. we have these these giant information books that at every firehouse with, uh, you know, detailed maps and running routes to every street and every split and everything else. And you're just expected to memorize that and know sure. it. Um, so you take an area knowledge test. You to, if you, whoever passes that, they'll bring them down to uh, the training academy, go through a driving course. Uh, and then there's another written test on operations and then a, a hands-on, like, practical um portion of it that's you know obviously different for the engine companies and the trucks but it's 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 a little bit of hands-on but it's the practical operations aspect Got of, of the test so and then they they'll you know combine those scores and figure out who gets the job yeah so then my my question would be then too so you guys run a four-man truck uh five five-man truck okay yeah so we're, we are we are lucky to have a yeah that's great 
I didn't know that. All right. So five man truck. So what is for the technician then for the tillerman and the, and the, uh, the chauffeur, you guys typically, uh, the more senior positions, if you will. So you're going to get more independent work. Is that how that works? Like roof and OV or something like that? How do you, how do you operate in that capacity um, on the fire ground? Yeah. So every company has a little bit of leeway to do what, uh, what they want with those okay. two positions. Um, but for the most part, it, at least what's in the books is the truck driver and tillerman are, are the roof team. So I can, I can tr- probably finagle any other jobs and duties in there that I, that I could want, sure. want to, as long as I could justify it. But mm-hmm. yeah, primarily we're the roof team. So it's got it. It's ground letter work. It's, you know, it, I mean, it is, it is OV work in the sense we don't, sure. we don't typically u- use the term, in dc um, right. but yeah it, it is it's ob work it's ladder work it's you know some horizontal event it's removing window bars and and going to the roof so the way the way we, we kind of attack it is i try and get my tillerman to the roof as fast as possible to get him started and if there are bars or something else i gotta address i'll stick around for a minute and hit that before i before i go up got it that makes sense. So the truck, I mean, this is, is something that you are passionate about. You've been riding one for 10 years, plus your time before that. I guess the engine's not really in your in your world. Um, so I would say this then, looking at your Instagram and knowing what you like to talk about, it's truck-focused, right? What is it about yeah. the truck? What is it about the truck and the work that you do that really fuels you? I mean, wh- why is it such a passion for you? Um. I mean, I couldn't tell you what, why I was drawn to it early. Um, but I think now I can say that it's the, uh, the thinking aspect of it. It's not a, you, you can't get a robot to do truck work. I don't yeah. think I could probably program, you know, I can't, but someone could probably <laughs> program a robot to drag a hose line in, in through a building and then, you know, pull a trigger, or open a nozzle. Love that. Um, but yeah, it's the, there, there's so many different aspects that go into it. You know, uh, you know, your knowledge of building construction, the buildings in your area and how am I going to attack this, these different, and, and I guess that's why I'm so drawn to the force entry stuff too, is like, there's so many variables that go into how I'm going to get through whatever the challenge is, right? Yeah. Whether it's a, a door a security gate, roll down gate, fence, window bars, whatever it is, like, uh, I mean, down to all right, window bars, like, well, how are they attached? Are they, is it a lag bolt? Is it, uh, you know, just the sheetrock through holding into wood? Like, there, there's so many different things that go into play that you need to really quickly analyze and formulate a game plan in your head and execute. To, to defeat whatever challenge you have in front of you. It's, it's just, I think it's just a thinking man's game. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot to that. Um, I think that, uh, you know, truck work offers a lot of independent thinking and a lot of knowledge on the go, if you will. Right. So it's uh, taking in a lot to do a lot. Um, I love it. I, I think it's great. And I think that the fact that you love sharing those tips, tricks and hacks, or if you see something you want to share it, I think that's important you mentioned that you're at the fire academy now uh, a little bit, right? So you're you're working with some of the new guys that are coming in, right? The proby classes or uh, programs that are being put in place. You mentioned, I think, a truck operator school, right? Talk to me a little bit yep. about that. Is that something that's a passion of yours to be down at the training center? Um, it is. Um, I'm there as much as I am because I'm turning into an overtime whore. <laughs> because you know we we talked about that. Yeah. Off, off the air. Um, but no, I, I, um, I, I do enjoy it, right? Because I, I think, like we said before, whatever you have, you need to pass on. And I, 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 so I, don't, I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. I haven't seen it all. Far, far from it. You know, in another 20 years when I retire, it probably won't be that long, um, you can ask me again and I'll, I'll, tell you the same thing i don't know everything i don't have all the answers i didn't see everything but i give you everything i got um so i i enjoy being down there and you know i do the um 
recruit training. So where, like when I went through the recruit school, you had a captain, lieutenant, and a sergeant assigned to your class, and they delivered every bit of the instruction. So, which in some regards was good. You had some continuity there. Um, but if I had three officers that were all had only ever been to assign to an inch company when right. it came time to do the truck stuff, they're like, uh, go for a ladder as kids. Like, I don't know what you want to do. Um, and vice versa. Now the way the, the program is running is there is a um a captain, a lieutenant, and two sergeants that oversee all of the classes and kind of more of the administrative side of things they still get involved with some some lectures and some some instruction but then we'll hire you know x amount of adjunct instructors you know from the field sure. to come down and teach so yeah. and they everyone had to go through uh, a little bit of training beforehand before you know being turned over to do that but it's broken down uh over the different disciplines so if where they're doing um you know a, a, a try today they'll hire guys that are turned over as truck company adjuncts makes sense so they're they're getting guys from from truck companies out, out in the city coming down and teaching them their material for the day so yeah, that's, that's great that's where that's working out really well um yeah. uh, i do that we have um, what I first got involved in at the training academy is called our ISTO office, the in-service training office. So those guys are, are responsible for delivering uh, kind of like quarterly drills to the companies out in the field. So that might be, um, you know, we just did a RIP drill. Uh, we've done larger scale, you know, scenario-based drills where we'll, we'll bring, you know, four or five companies down at a time or it might be sending a couple of guys out with a rip pack and going over basic stuff you know we, we're going to come to each indi individual firehouse and yeah. deliver that instruction um and that's where i first got involved on the school doing that so i really i enjoy it um i think we've got a for the most part all around we've got a solid group of like-minded individuals working out of those Nice. Those offices. Yeah. And, well, I think yeah. Washington, D.C. brings a lot to the table. I mean, you know, this is a busy urban department. There's a lot of opportunity. Um, and, you know, for, for a training academy to reach out to the guys that are boots on the ground in the streets every day to come down and to be a part of the process, I think that makes I, – I think it's a smart approach. And, I, I, you, know, I, you know, kudos for that. I mean, it makes a world of difference, I'm sure, for the recruits. Um, yeah. Yeah. Talk to me then a little bit about what keeps you up at night. You mentioned that before. Um, you said, hey, I'm, we're going to come back around to that. I always ask the guests but when we start the podcast before I hit the record button. I go, you know, topics, you know, if you, if you want to talk about something that keeps you up at night, good, bad, indifferent, whatever it is. What are you seeing? I mean, you're out there teaching. You're working with the younger generation. You're you're riding the truck. You're going to fires. You're working with older guys. Like, what what what's bothering you? What's good about the job? You mentioned you got something you wanted to mention. What is it? Yeah, because when we first talked, you said that, that that's one of the topics you bring up. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I sleep. I sleep all right. <laughs> not not really. I sleep like shit. Yeah, me too. Um, but um, yeah, two things bother me they'll they'll when i'm laying in bed at night before i go in to work and or when i'm driving home from a shift is usually when these two things bother me so the first one is um what am i going to do with my guys what are we going to train on what am i going to give them and I, I don't, it doesn't even need to be like a formal drill I, that's usually what, I, what i'm thinking about but that takes up my hour plus long commute into work most most days is i'm looking at the roster on my phone seeing who's working i'm right. like all right what am i what am i going to do with these guys today because they're all we could always do basic stuff and we do and i think everyone should right you get get really good at the basics yep um throw ladders four stores you know that kind of stuff but we also want to see some growth in those guys too right so we sure. have to challenge them we got to give them something new um and that's where i rack my brain because we've got We've got such a young department and we've got a young crew 
and I always struggle fig, trying to figure out what I want to do with them. Because if I'm going to do something larger scale or we're going to get dressed and go out and do something at an acquired building, maybe not everyone's on the same skill level or maybe someone's really squared away with, you know, uh, whatever topic and right. the other guy isn't. So we're, am I going to divide my time or am I going to, am I going to do this drill, but the guy over here is got, not really going to get much out of it because he's already super squared away with that topic. That's where, you know, I rack my brain constantly trying to figure out how, how I can give these guys something uh, of value every time they come to work. How's that going for you? Uh, it's a mess. I mean, be, because I mean, <laughs> here's the thing, right? It's like, yeah, I mean, and the reason why I ask, I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous question, but the reason why I ask is you're taking into consideration the four other guys on your company that day and their skill sets. And too often we lose guys in training because we do one, one type of set training across the board and you have some guys that are super proficient, others that aren't, and usually the ones that aren't then uh, are being challenged and more focus goes on them. But the guys that have it and they can do it and they're proficient with it then get lost in the shuffle because now they're just hanging back, right? So, like, yeah. it, it is that balance, right? It's hard. Yeah. And like I said, you can always go over the basic stuff, right? If there's a if there's a day where I ever come to work and someone says, "Hey, can we go through ladders?" and I say, "No," like just take me up back and shoot me because uh, I'm done. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we can have any shit, right? You should dedicate a certain x amount of time to just working on the basics, the fundamentals of of the of your craft. Um, but then, yeah, it's trying to challenge those guys and, and give them what's going to move them up to the next level, right? The next, um, the next mark on the board. Yeah. And that that's that's difficult sometimes. And then sometimes the guys take off or they get detailed, and now I'm stuck with some detailed guy I don't know. I'm like, ah, now, now we're back down to square one because I got to see where this guy's at for the day just to make it through one tour. And now what I had planned for those guys gets kicked down the road. All right, we'll we'll try next tour. But trying to find that balance of giving everyone something to to get them better. And this is, is the difficult. technician's job, or is that just how it works in your company? No, that's that's just how. Uh, and I have a phenomenal captain too, so it's yeah. it's kind of the both of us. We'll we'll come in and sit in front of a ladder truck, and all right, well, we, you know, what do you want to do today? Where are we going? What are we doing? Got it. And and try and map map up the day. And then usually Southeast will, you know, share plans down because they've got. 20 runs for us that uh <laughs> yeah yeah just, it's not a dull, wait. yeah it's not dull for sure um and then the other thing that to, to that point if i'm leaving the next day after a tour and i didn't give them something if i didn't do a formal drill just because we got busy or we got called down to wherever for some mandatory HR training or whatever it is, right? If if our plans got foiled for the day and I left work and I didn't give those guys something, I kick myself the entire way home. I'm writing this down, so just bear with me. Why do you feel that you didn't? You feel that you didn't give enough? I mean, yeah. If it, either by by my fault or no fault of yeah. Of mine. I didn't get to drill those guys on the topic I wanted or do something to make them better, give them something I have. Um, I feel like I, you know, I feel like I failed for that day. Hmm. The good thing is in three days, I get to try again. Yes. Um, but yeah, if, if, if we didn't do something to make ourselves better that day, I go home kicking myself in the ass, feeling like we uh, we didn't do our job. I wish more guys felt the same way I you do. do my job. I wish more guys felt the way you do because I think guys are pretty content when it's a when it's quiet and they don't push themselves and 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 you don't rock the boat, man. Status quo, and I fucking hate status quo. That's just me. Um, but that's got to come from somewhere. I guess it's got to be the mentors and the people that raised you through this fire service with what you've been talking about giving back and how important that is to you. I mean, you actually, you live that. I mean, you don't get to, to push guys on your shift. You're, you think about it the whole way home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I try to, uh, no one, I'm human. No one's perfect. 
Um, I mean, we we didn't do uh, a ton yesterday. I mean, guys did some informal drills in the house. It was it was hot. It was Juneteenth, and we were said, you know what, we're gonna have an easy day. We'll keep it inside today, you know. But even still, we didn't get didn't get a ton done. Went to a pretty decent fire and spent a a, a good time, kind of hot washing that afterwards, which. I can't always count. I, I I won't count that as my what did I give you for the day, but Got it. in reality, in reality, yeah. you know, yeah, yes, you know, we 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 did, um, but yeah, uh, that's why I strive for every day is is to give them guys something because, um, I feel obligated to, yeah, right? and you know, and I think I don't care if we said this off camera or not. Like that's where the the whole Instagram thing came from. Is like I'd be riding around or working overtime or just uh, on my normal shift and see something, a, a door. Hey, we gotta, let me, give me, give me a second. Let me take a picture of this. And this rolled on door over here. How are we forcing this? We talked about, I'm taking pictures. So, you know, months later, we're sitting at the table scrolling through. Oh, you remember that? How, how would we force this door? What remember this roll up over there? How is life? Oh, like, hold on. Let me scroll through the, 38,000 pictures of doors and dumb force entry <laughs> should I have in my phone? Like, yeah, that's one. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah. So, I mean, that I, I catalog all that for for my own use, right? Um, it, internally. So, I'm, it, it, if I'm looking at a door and how, how I'm going to force right, that's going in the in the in the back of my brain for the next time I need it, right? But then I'm going to take that and pass it on to the guys that I have an immediate impact over. Um, be that's kind of why my Instagram page went from you know just me taking pictures of dumb shit and me out hunting or fishing or, or whatever to basically nothing but fire service related stuff is because why not share with everyone? Yeah, I I, I remember I remember being sixteen, seventeen years old, in upstate New York, and I wish I had that ability to gain that knowledge. At the at your fingertips, like we do today. So, Bro, why, that's what why, I was, why, that's why, what I was, why wouldn't you share it? I was just gonna say that to you. You actually like as the podcast is starting to wind down. We're at about an hour now, but like you absolutely, you're a pro, man. You just brought it around full circle to the beginning of the conversation. Twenty years ago, you know, Drew Evans didn't have an Instagram page that allowed for educating the young Drew Evan. You know, Evans about right. about forcible entry or about Washington D.C. Fire Department or about Kentland. Like, there's so much opportunity now, right? And it's just it's so incredible that it should be pushing this job forward. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a double edged sword. Yeah, for sure. Because there's plenty of uh, bad information out there. There's plenty of, um, and again, I I say this by saying uh, I I don't know everything. Right. I don't have all the answers. I haven't seen everything. Um, and West Coast does things different than the East Coast and Houston does things different than New York. But some things we might all agree on are just fucked up. And you see that a lot on social media, too. Sure. So you have to. Um, uh, what is. Uh, what is Mick from the. Uh, Mickey Farrell, top yeah. four. Yeah, top four. So you, 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 you have to vet your, uh, vet the source or something. You got to like vet that. the vetters. Says, yeah, vet the vetters. Yep. So uh, it's a double edged sword. There's, um, it's a wonderful tool to spread knowledge. And it's not just, I mean, it's worldwide, right? Yeah. Um, so at any given moment, you can see and, figure out what they're doing on the West coast or in, you know, wh wherever and learn something, talk to these guys from wherever. Uh, I mean, I've, I've gotten messages from people all across the country, Love it. Uh, but the, the fourth monthly Friday post, whatever, whatever it may be. So it's, it's amazing in that regard. Um, there's plenty of haters who you just of have course. to ignore, but, but there's also plenty of, people that just do it because it's the I, I guess it's the cool thing to do now i guess um and or chasing followers or whatever it is and the information they're putting out isn't 
isn't good. It's not, it's not helping to advance the craft in yeah. any, any, any way. So you gotta be careful of what you're, what you're looking at. But oh, I agree with you, but I think there's always been that in the fire service. It's just taking a different form on today's channels of delivery. Right. But like we always had people that, I mean, I just read an article the other day on fire engineering's website that was like, I can't believe they published it. And it went around in the inner circles that I'm in. And people were like, you know, this is one guy that was basically questioning the skills and abilities of the largest fire department in the country when it came to a certain aspect of firefighting. And I'm like, did anybody, did anybody even read this article? Like, how the hell does, how does that get published when, when the repercussions of that and, and the mixed messages that it sends, I, I just, you know, it, it's truly, and I think yeah. that's where who's vetting the vetters, or <laughs> Mickey's who's vetting the vetters came from, uh, was, yeah. was very much that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Social media has just made it easier. Yes. For, now anyone can pick it up, right? Yeah. That, before, I had to be motivated enough to write an article mail it to fire engineering yes and and maybe it makes it through the the editor or not right or before that you know go teach a class somewhere which there definitely weren't as many as there are now there's way there's like i mean you can't throw a stick yes in, in any direction without hitting a, a new fire conference yep 100%. but with you you have that power uh in your in the palm of your hand now so it's much easier for anyone to put something out right but and, uh, again i say for the most part uh, there's a lot of phenomenal guys that are they're using that tool uh for good no doubt i would agree i would agree with you i, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that um you know but like anything there's always going to be those few that uh, that are thrown into the mix that can skew the skew the positive but let me do this. Uh, what's next for you? What do you got cooking? Anything exciting coming up for you? I know how busy you are. You work a ton. You mentioned overtime. I know you're crushing overtime. Uh, you know, if you could do captain salary by running the bar, hey, I get it, but you can't. So you, yeah, gotta, you they, work a ton. Uh, you know, I don't know. That, that might be the next venture. We got to figure out how we can make that happen. Okay. Um, what's next? Um, I've got, uh, I mean, I, I toy, not daily, but. You know, uh, the family is coming first right now, Good. and um, this is why I'm working 10 hour time. If I were to take a promotion exam, there's the chance of getting stuck at a day work spot, kind of mess that up. So I'm, I'm toying with when is the right time to get promoted. Sure. Um, and I, I don't know what that is there a, is yeah, there is a there number is yeah, just right. what is there just what what's right yeah. with uh with it. life in, in general there so yeah um it'll definitely happen eventually Good. but uh, I, i'm just having too much fun just driving ladder truck around it's not it, so bad it, it, man it, you know it's, it's not it's, it's not bad at all you know it's got me thinking about what you were talking about hey i just want to go to fires and kick open doors i mean it's just you know there's there's uh as as simple as that statement is there's a lot packed into it um, yeah. but I'll tell you this, they, man, go, go ahead. What were you going to say? They don't let me break too many doors down anymore. <laughs> so I, just cut, I, 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 cut, I cut big holes in the roof. Yeah, there like you go. That's all right. Trade-offs, man. Trade-offs. Yeah. But that's all right. Well, listen, man, I can't thank you enough for spending some time with me. I know how busy you are. And, uh, it was just nice to, you know, finally get to really meet you and, and hear a little bit about your story. Um, I'll say this, you know, uh, watching from afar and seeing what you're putting out on your social media, uh, and, and then after the conversation tonight with you and, uh, you know, really hearing the passion that you have for the job and the, and the guys that you work with, um, it shows and you're making a difference, man. So thank you for spending some time with me tonight. I truly appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, good. Uh, we keep talking about your Instagram. Is it public or is it private? Uh, yeah, it's public. So, um, I've I've been told it's the most random ass uh, Instagram handle or name that I could have come up with. So it's Andrew uh, one eight seven five two. Which Perfect. Is my old my old county ID number. There you um, go. But yeah, I wasn't feeling very uh, creative when I when I made the account. Sorry. It's all right, man. Yeah. You, you don't got to apologize to me. Nobody else cares yeah. either. Because if you if they do end up following you, they're gonna get some really good nuggets, man. And, uh, and that's your part of, of putting it forward on a bigger platform. So thanks for doing that. Thank you for joining me today. Truly, Drew. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun having you on the show. So thank you very much, man. Awesome, Drew. Been a pleasure. Yeah, good. Stay right here. I'm just going to sign off the podcast, and I'll come right back to you, man. So hang on one All sec, right. okay? 
Everyone, thanks for tuning in for another episode of the National Fire Radio Podcast. Drew Evans, uh, 16 truck out of the District of Columbia. Rockstar. He's putting out some really good stuff. Appreciate the conversation tonight. So do me a favor. Take this conversation. Take it back to the firehouse and talk about it. Because when we talk about the job, we're making the job better. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you at the next one. Jeremy, National Fire Radio.